Welcome to Man360, I'm your host Brian. Today I'm in Nashville, Tennessee at our CTN station, WHTN. Thank you to Monica Schmelter and her team for helping us out today. On today's program, we'll explore the concept of hard things in life. First, I talk with one of our CTN station managers, David Mayo, about his life of overcoming odds. Even though David has lived most of his life in a wheelchair, that's not stopped him from all kinds of athletics and leading a full and accomplished life. We also get some great advice about how to fuel your body when working out from our friend of the program and host of Christian Fitness on CTN, Robert Evans. Then we'll wrap up the program with my friend Mike Malone talking about his multi-day trips completing the entire Colorado Trail. This episode, get ready to be inspired and educated. I'm glad you're here. Let's get started. Welcome to Man360. David Mayo is probably one of the most optimistic and naturally joyful people you'll ever meet. When you think of someone in a wheelchair, the assumption can be that they have, have some kind of attitude or act like they're missing something in life. That is not David. He has done things like downhill snow skiing and recently finished an incredible and grueling mountain ride on his hand cycle in Colorado. When Yolanda and I saw his schedule and where he rode, we knew you'd enjoy the details about his trip. We also had a deeper conversation about keeping a positive attitude in life when unexpected things happen. I consider David an excuse killer to people who say something can't be done. Here's my conversation with my friend, David Mayo. David Mayo, <laughs> thank you for being on Man360. Oh man, it's my uh, privilege. Yeah, I love the show. We are joking yeah. that normally you're over here interviewing yeah. guests and you're sitting in the interviewee chair. Yeah, a little unique for me, but hey, I'm loving it already. Yes, That's so right. I know yeah. we're, we're here with you at WHBR and you're actually the general manager here for the station for CTN. And um, I want to talk to you a little bit about how did you get into television? Well, uh, I had a traumatic experience uh, at 16, mountain climbing, out on a family vacation. Uh, we were on a whitewater rafting trip mm -hmm. and felt uh, wanted to climb up this uh, cliff wall. Got about 30 feet up the wall. Just a 16-year-old idiot, not afraid of heights. Right. But anyway, not bowling. There was no ropes connected yeah, nothing, to you or anything. Nothing. Yeah. And anyway, slipped and fell straight down into the boulders and broke my back. And so at that point, I'm thinking life is completely over, yeah. paralyzed. Yeah. Um, very much an athlete. Um, didn't know what I was going to do. You know, not only just with sports, but life in general. Yeah. But after I got out of high school, I took a job um, uh, in a, at a radio station at a Christian radio station, and I really enjoyed uh, broadcasting. And it was a lot of fun, and I went to, uh, on to college and took a, a production class with video, liked that even more than radio. And so uh, when I graduated from college with my broadcasting degree, uh -huh. Uh, someone introduced me to this man named Bob DeAndre. Oh, Bob DeAndre. And, uh, <laughs> and he was opening up a station in Pensacola just um, uh, two months uh, you know, later. Yeah. And Bob hired me the day the station signed on the air, January 1986. That is hilarious. So you've been with the station since 1986. Yeah, 30, going on 37 years. And just talking today, I found out you grew up actually in the Pensacola area. Yep. yep. Moved away, moved, moved once. Yeah, that's right. And still here, you yeah. and Beverly. And yeah, traveled a lot, but no place like home. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. you mentioned uh, your fall and you know being in a wheelchair now. Right. So you actually have a, it's a hand cycle. I guess it's right. a, a pedal bike with your hands. Yep, yep, a hand and bike, that's exactly right. Yeah, it's a three wheel machine, kind of, you know, uh, my legs are out front and um, yeah, I'm, I'm a maniac on that yeah, machine. That's yeah, that's what I you mentioned. It. I know yeah. you, you also mentioned, side note, that you actually got in an accident, somebody actually hit you with a car. Right. Destroyed your bike and you had to get a new bike. Yep, yep. So with this new bike, you actually took it to Colorado. I did. There's a big annual ride out there. I wasn't really familiar with it. It's called Ride the Rockies. Yeah. It happens every June and it's like a six day trip, different routes they go. Mm -hmm. uh, this past June, it started in right at Copper Mountain, went to Glenwood Springs, down the, through Aspen area, 
uh, and it ended up in Golden, uh, kind of where close to you in Denver. Yeah. But uh, yeah, epic trip and five mountain passes, uh, just brutal climbing in Pensacola. There's we don't, right. do, you know, our, our, our hill is a bridge. Yeah, you're not. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what's a hill? Right, it's a yeah. depression in the ground that you yeah. drive back up oh, out of. So it was a brutal challenge. Um, you know, why did I want to do something like that? Uh, you know, it's just uh, my wife thinks I'm a bit, you know, mental in some areas. And so, but the challenge of it, Brian, is is what really yeah. is attractive yeah. uh, to me. Uh, you know, and so when Independence Pass, for example, it's an iconic mm -hmm. mountain pass in Colorado. Yep. You're familiar with it. Yep. It's an 11 mile climb of a steady six to eight percent grade. And so physically, wow. it's it's enormously challenging. Yeah. But mentally, you know, just to be able just to grind it out, it took me four hours. But I was dreaming of that summit sign at the top, you know, Independence <laughs> Pass, you know, right at uh, close to, you know, 13,000 feet. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that was kind of motivating me up that climb yeah. was to is to get to that sign. Well, you know, you do have people that can Photoshop things like that, too. You know, you could be like, you know, we're going to go out and r ride yeah. the ride the beach. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yet yeah, it's funny because when you mentioned this ride to me and you actually asked yeah. I, the timing didn't work out, but you were asking yes. me if I wanted to ride my mountain bike. Yes. With you. And I thought, you know, and I didn't, had not even heard about this race because there was a couple other races that you've done as well. Right. Um, yep. And just, you know, not races, but more rides around mm -hmm. the country. Yeah, yeah, I know. And I just came back from another trip in your neck of the woods. Yep, Yellowstone. And, and, and Yellowstone, and the Tetons. And yep. such incredible scenery. Just God's creation is just, you know, so majestic and yeah. massive out there. So, yeah, I love it. You know, people from the mountains want to come to the beach. But those of us on the beach right. want to go to the mountains. <laughs> well, Yolanda grew up in Florida, and she's right. always, it was so funny to me because I grew up in Montana around mountains. Right. And she's always like, yeah, I love I love going up in the mountains, and, you know, we love Durango yeah. and all that. And it was just right. funny to me to be married to her, the, yeah, <laughs> to right. enjoy the mountains. Yeah, exactly right. But when you're on that, in that journey and on that trip, um, you know, what were some of the things you were thinking as far as motivation when you're in yeah. the middle of this incredible journey yeah. on this bike? Um, yeah, like I said, just the just the the challenge of it, the feat of it, mm -hmm. um, you know. And I'm, you know, I'll be 60, uh, you know, this year. So I know I hate to even admit this, but I know my the, my chances of of accomplishing these kind of massive physical challenges are are limited. Yeah. Um, but uh, so I want to tackle them while you know while I can. Yep. And so, so yes, yeah, so that's a little bit a part of it yeah. as well. Hey, so, so what even, did you do in training for? I was going to ask you that too. What did you do in training yeah, for I this? I mean, yeah, just you know, hitting it hard. Uh, you know, here at, at home, I'm a part of a bike club. Okay. And so it's also motivating. I'm the only hand cycle person. You know, there's I'm usually riding weekends with 20 or 30 guys, and so wow. trying to keep up with them using their strong legs. Yeah. You know, here I am on my arms. You know, so it's always pushing me, making me better. Yeah. You know, being around, you know, people like that. Yeah. And so, so it keeps me fit. So the other main thing I want to talk to you as well is, you know, men going through challenges and struggles, mm -hmm. obviously with your wheelchair situation. I've never, I've never thought of you as like a disabled person because you're just David and you have <laughs> a, a wheelchair, right? It's not like there's yeah. this disability. Right. I I, I, feel, yeah, no. I, I see it just doing the same things, just in a different position. Yeah, you're just seated. Just right? seated. Just yeah. a, a lower uh, it's all position. the same. I play tennis, you know, I snow ski, but it's a bike. Yeah. But, but it's all from just a different position. Yeah. So what do you? What would you say to men maybe dealing with a difficult situation in life? Yeah. You know, how do you how do you walk through that? What are yeah. some advice? What's some advice? Yeah, you it's give so you? easy, Brian, to kind of focus on what we don't have, what we can't do. Mm -hmm. And I just refuse to go there. Yeah. I, I just flip it. I, I, I look at what, you know, what I do have and what I can do. Yeah. And, um, you know, we talk about, you know, Hebrews There's a great scripture called in Hebrews 12. You know, let us run this race with endurance. Yeah looking unto Jesus, fixing our eyes on him, the author and perfecter of our faith. Yeah. And when we're looking, you know, to him, you're not looking, uh, you know, behind which what yeah. we don't have, what we can't do. Right. You know, he's positive. He's hope. You know, he's courage. And so, you know, uh, so I'm just making a, a, a decision that I want to fix yeah. my eyes on him and yeah. focus on these things that I can do. Uh, and that just, yeah, that gets me through life yeah. with, with joy. 
uh, yeah. as well. And so that's, that's what um, I would say to that. Yeah, I think yeah. too for you, in watching you operate and you know, we've known you for a while now too, obviously with, yeah. in the CTN capacity, but I think sometimes too watching you, it's an inspiration to people you know, you yeah. think about what they're, what I'm, even for myself, you know, think of things that I've gone yeah. through, whether it's been with my eyes, some other medical conditions and things. Yeah. It's like to watch, and I, I mentioned that, Yolanda and I were talking about that, and even for the interview, it's just that we've always felt like you've always had just a positive attitude about stuff, and we know yeah. that's really Christ shining through you. Exactly. And, and really and resolving. We all have him. Yes. And right. And resolving those things from the past, and right. really looking forward, as you said. So, yeah. David, can you pray for our viewers? Again, yeah. maybe dealing with something, again, and just a, uh, a struggle of some kind in their life, but would you pray for them right now? Oh, I'd be, I'd be glad to, yes. Yes. Uh, yes, Father God, we just thankful, Lord, that uh, we have your spirit inside of us, the greater one who lives in us, that's motivating us, that's pushing us forward. And Lord, may we just be uh, submissive uh, to your strength, your boldness, your courage that resides in us, Lord. May that just flow out. And Lord, just go after you with gusto, fixing our eyes on you, Lord Jesus. And we just do not look behind, we don't look to the side, things we can't do, what we don't have. But Father, we know that your will will be done in our life as we just pursue you, draw near to you. And we thank you, Lord, that we will fulfill your call in our lives. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. David. Amen. Always amazing spending oh, time with Brian. you. Yeah, my, my uh, ultimate pleasure. You're just, uh, you're fun to hang out with, brother. Thank you, sir. Thank you again for being on the program. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> no problem. For our men's health segment today, we have the host of Christian Fitness, Robert Evans, sharing some important tips about fuel for your body when working out. Check it out. Robert, thank you again for being on Man360. Appreciate it, man. We're back in your kitchen here on Christian Fitness. And um, yeah, I know we had talked a little bit about the importance of fueling our bodies in working out. And you were saying, well, we could do this and we could do this. And there was probably like, you know, you said there's an infinitesimal number of ways to think about food when you're working out. So I wanted to maybe have you go over just some building blocks and maybe some basics of, you know, what to eat, what's, you know, in the purpose or necessity of even eating, depending on how long you're going to work right, out. Right. And then we can obviously use the website with the um, additional content mm -hmm. page to give some more information later, but just share a little bit, kind of a setup. And then also we know that one of the things you told me was water is the most important food the most to eat important. or drink. The most important. A lot of people, you know, they really concentrate on what's my workout going to be. You know, it's biking, lifting, whatever it is. I'm so concentrated on the workout itself. They forget the nutrient part, which number one being hydration. Dehydration is one of the worst things, just in general life, we, even without exercising. Mm -hmm. But the side effects of being dehydrated, I mean, they're unbelievable. Um, everything from, of course, everybody knows cramping. You know, if you're, you're competing, right. you're going to cramp if you're right. dehydrated. But it, it goes so much further than that. It's everything from you actually can lose your motor skills, your reflexes slow down, you get confused, you get a headache, your heart rate increases, which you don't want an wow. increased yeah. elevated heart rate when it's already right. elevated. Right. Uh, but anyway, so there's so many side effects just from being dehydrated. Um, so you've noticed now in youth sports, a lot of times they break like every 20 minutes and make yep. sure the kids get hydrated, yeah. which is perfect. About every 20 minutes you want to rehydrate um, and definitely hydrate before you work out and then rehydrate afterwards. So right. yeah, water is probably the most important thing you can do. Um, if you are going to exercise, work out, do anything, if it's under an hour, you really don't need food. You don't need okay. fuel while you're working out yeah. if it's under an hour. Uh, so really just hydrate every 20 minutes while you're working out or whatever you're doing. If you're bike riding, yep. you know, whatever it is, um, take, a, take a break every 10 to 20 minutes, hydrate. And that's really good enough for an hour or under workout. Yep. Well, you were telling so it's kind me kind of too. simple building blocks. Yeah, well, you were basic. telling me this to tell you guys all out there in TV land. Um, when Robert was mentioning this about water, it was kind of actually scaring me. Some of the things you were telling, you're like, I have this list and you unrolled like, you know, the, the, the scroll of the lamb, you know, you're reading all these hydration issues and things. Yeah. So, and I was telling you, I like even feel sometimes during the day, cause I'm thinking of my weight and how much it says to, to drink mm -hmm. water. But I guess the, the kind of the rule of thumb too, is just to drink more water than you think you need. Absolutely. Because it's generally people are, you said, you know, more 99% of people don't drink enough water right. in that. 
So let's talk about a little bit about superfoods. You were saying some things I was trying to figure out. Mm -hmm. What are some foods that are good before, during, or even after a workout that way? So you had a couple of foods that you thought were great. Yeah, we got a couple here that we that yes. joined us for today's show. But we've yes. got, of course, the banana is probably the ultimate workout superfood. Uh, Pre-workout, during your workout if you can, post-workout, um, banana is one of the best just because of the nutrients. And there's a lot of carbs in bananas, which are going to help you before, after, and during the workout. Yep. Um, but So that is one of the main superfoods. And super I hate foods. the taste of bananas. I eat them because I know they're good for me. Banana smoothie? No, it's I peanut just Peanut butter, can't. anything? It's the texture. It's too squishy to me. I'm a big texture guy I was going to say food. smoothie. Grind it I up. Know. You won't even know. And think about it. And the other one you said Oranges was... are great for you as well. Oranges are fantastic. A lot, of course, the vitamin C, but just the nutrients and the vitamins in the orange are really going to help you, yep. especially if we talked about that hour workout. Over an hour, you have to refuel. You've okay. got to refuel the body because your body is depleted, especially, yep. let's say, a long bike ride, which I know you ride a lot. Yeah. If you're out for two, two and a half, three hours on a bike ride or yeah. a run, you've got to, you've got to fuel the body because you actually lose uh, a lot of the glucose and things and the sugars through that exercise. <laughs> Careful. My wife will be upset. Lori warned us about this, right? <laughs> I'm just gonna set that right. So anyway, there. you yes. want you want to hydrate during. I'm sorry, you want to fuel yep. during the exercise. Yep. Oranges are a great one, um, and, and you there are a lot of others. Yeah, I you mean, mentioned nuts too that were good because nuts they're quick, are fantastic, and they're easy to eat. I know for like mountain biking stuff, right. you're not gonna sit there and peel an orange or peel a uh, banana, right? But like you said, nuts are also good. Nuts are good. Trail mix is great. Yep. Um, so if you're going hiking, you know, take a backpack. Make sure you take some nutrients to refuel during the hike. Yep. Um, same with bike riding. You can take a little backpack or whatever it is. Um, for runs, you know, now they have the vest with the water built in and everything else. Right. So make sure that you hydrate, but you get the nutrients. You talked about the building blocks. Your muscles, you know, they're going to start to deplete themselves and right. your, your performance is going to suffer. You're going to start to, like I said, with the hydration, you get a headache. Your muscles are going to suffer. So you've got to build a little of that fuel back in and especially the carbs are good uh even during those long bouts mm -hmm. of exercise yeah. just to recarb they have a lot of the little you know what i call them the toothpaste tubes yeah the, of squirt, the, with, yeah, the, the instant carbs the little yeah. sugars and things like that yep. uh, be careful with too much sugar okay um energy drinks are good the sports drinks are good um but the sugars can give you a burst but then there's a crash Right. So that's why I like nuts and things like that. They're, they've got a little longer release life. Yep. In other words, if you have trail mix or some nuts, those proteins and those carbs are going to extend a little bit longer than that quick burst you get from the sugars. Yeah. And I know you had mentioned again, just about making sure you understand that sugar is not just even good sugars that way. It's any kind of sugar. Yeah. Um, so again, Robert, thank you for being on the program. Absolutely. I always appreciate your knowledge and your wisdom and, mm -hmm. and what to, to do in these workout situations. I know for you all out there, we are going to provide on our additional content page of Man360, we're gonna, I'm gonna have Robert do a couple sheets mm -hmm. or a couple of PDFs that you can download and keep those maybe for mountain biking, maybe for you know doing a little bit extended type of workouts or things that are over an hour, maybe that would need some kind of, of fuel in that way. If you'd like to send Robert a, an email or a question, you can go to our Man360 uh, .tv page and click a con click connect, send us an email. I'll make sure you get that to Robert. He'll respond to you. And also maybe if you have a favorite food or something that you like to eat before a workout, maybe go to our Instagram page or maybe our Facebook page and share with us so we can share with other people and just have a conversation about how you feel before you go work out. So right. Robert, awesome, thanks again man. for being on the appreciate program. It. Thanks for having me. I always appreciate you and our <laughs> Got to clean up. fruit bowl. Yeah, we'll have to clean up. So, but thank you for being on the program. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Mike Malone is the dad of our friend of the program, Aaron Malone of Gideon's Tactical. Mike has always had a love of the outdoors and it's been fun to spend time with him for over 20 years as a friend. Something amazing Mike did that I always wanted to hear about was his 567 mile hike of the entire Colorado Trail. We talked about the importance of planning out where he would stop for water, what to pack because every ounce needed to be accounted for, and what it was like to finish this amazing journey. Here's Mike and I stopping on a hike to talk about his adventure on the Colorado Trail. So welcome to this outdoor segment of Man360. Uh, I have my friend Mike Malone here. You'll notice the last name is very similar to Aaron Malone, who is uh, Gideon's Tactical on YouTube. So this is actually his father. And uh, Mike and I have been friends for over 20 years, I, I guess. So, yeah. It's been a while. And so uh, we're up here in Colorado. We actually found this little, well, we were told on uh, good authority that it was a lake. It's more like a glorified pond, <laughs> I think, that we're at. So you can kind of see some of the shots of where we are here and in Colorado. We love hiking Colorado. And uh, Mike has really done a lot of longer hikes specific to Colorado. 
Uh, the Colorado Trail is one that you've done completely. Yes. And how long is the Colorado Trail totally? It's, I think, a little under 500 miles. Okay, so from, five, yeah. And it starts just outside Denver and Waterton Canyon, and it goes to do, just outside Durango. Over 500 miles, basically, of hiking. Uh, and Mike has hiked, I mean, you're from California, but you've lived here in Colorado for how long? It's been about 27 years 27, now. 27, yeah. So I think we yeah. met you guys within about five or six years of when you'd moved here. Yeah. And um, so I want to talk to Mike a little bit about how he prepared for that hike. And really, you know, doing this hike is obviously was a hard thing. You know, it wasn't something to everybody. I don't think a lot of people can say they've hiked the entire Colorado Trail, maybe sections of it. Or, and we've hiked sections of it as well, just as a group. Yeah. But I want you to talk a little bit, Mike, about maybe what did you do to maybe to start kind of uh, preparing for that hike? What did you do? Like, what do you like, like the pack that you got, the weight that you're thinking about, some of those kind of things? Sure. So when we got together with a couple of friends from work and we decided, let's hike the Colorado Trail. <laughs> OK, sure. Why not? I wasn't in my 20s and 30s anymore. So that I, I we're doing this because we're good. We're going to do it in sections, you know, not a through hike. Right. Because we didn't have the time from work and stuff. So we did it basically six or seven day, 70 to 80 miles at a time. Mm -hmm. And so I said, I'm going to have to get lightweight or I'm like, I can't go. Right. Right. Because <laughs> you got to carry, you know, six, seven days. That's a lot of food. Yeah. That you got and water that you may have to carry with yourself. Yeah. So I had to. So I started researching everything on the Internet for light backpacking. Lightweight yeah. backpacking, well, and just read articles and what you should do, what kind of gear you should try to get. Because I just had super heavy stuff from like the eighties, yeah, eighties yeah. and early nineties that was weighed a lot, but it didn't matter to me. I could, I packed sixty five pounds on the John Muir Trail. Wow. Yeah, and I could do it. I was wow. strong in my twenties, <laughs> but right. when I started this, I was probably right. fifty five. Wow. So wow, that wow. wasn't. That wasn't going to cut it. So I remember you showed me specifically your backpack. So what kind of backpack did you use for the majority of that trail? I remember I teased you about your backpack that had a ton of holes in it, and you had patched it up. I think that was the same one that you probably used. Yeah, I had used. a couple. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was a, a lightweight internal pack. It only weighed about two and a half pounds. It was called a ULA, I think, at ULA. Mm -hmm. Umlaut over the Umla. U. Yeah, the, yeah. Yeah, and I, I got it. It was a semi-custom pack from a guy in um, Logan, Utah. So I think buy, he still makes them. but I was going to say, so you can buy a pack that actually fits your body exactly. Mm -hmm. You give them your weight, dimensions, whatever, yeah. and they actually build it Yeah, to it's you. not, you know, totally custom, but they modify, you know, the torso length and what pockets you do or don't want on it. That's cool. Things like that. Yeah. yeah. So I met the guy who actually I happened to be out there on a vacation, and we made a little trip to his wow. place in the back. He had, like, a big garage in back of his house where he had a couple employees and wow. himself making these packs. and. It was a great pack. It was lightweight. I could do about 35 pounds max Wow! to totally pack it out. That was with your food and everything. That's everything. And wow. it's totally packed out, and that filled that thing up. Yeah. But it lasted not all it had was a couple small little tears in it that I just patched with, you know, repair tape. Yeah, and I would incessantly tease Mike about this pack. You know, we'd all have these fancy, you know... Uh, Osprey bags, or we'd have all these fancy stuff. Mike's like, pff, pff, this Ula bag works great. And he'd yeah. take it on his trips and he'd have like this bag. And it was just funny. But to think of the history of that bag and what you've done with it. So, specifically with food, real quick, and water, how do you do that? I know you said you did about seven days, six or seven days at a time. You yep. did one 10 day one that you said you, uh, you all felt was ridiculous, but like a six to seven yeah. day. What did that look like with food and water? Um, so, um, I'm not really fancy when I backpack for food. You know, I just do the freeze-dried meals. It's simple and easy. Don't get crazy. Yeah. And they're lightweight. So because you rehydrate them. So, right. And they pack small. Right. So I would get those, like, Mountain House Pro Packs, mm -hmm. which is, like, two servings, you know, in one. Yep. And yep. That, that's dinner plus whatever. Like the snacks and stuff, too, and just And then the just, trail. Did just trail mix and energy bars yep. and gummy bears for a little bit of yeah, change. Those, uh, honey, what are they, the honey? Uh, stingers, stinger, honey, honey stinger, stinger bears, chews, or whatever chews are chews good. Chews and stuff, those are really good. So just really simple things like that. Yeah. It was all, you know, and then have a hot chocolate or a coffee or an apple cider mm -hmm. for something a little bit different in the mornings. And then you had your water. Did you do water. filtration or did yep. you try to do? We always, we always filtered water. So you didn't, how much water would you carry on a trip versus a filter? Um, it depended on where we were going because okay. we, um, they have really good trail section. They divide the 
Colorado Trail, I don't know, it might have 30 sections okay. that are like 10 miles a piece. Yep. And they have uh, a trail book you can buy, and it tells you what to expect, what passes. Oh, that's cool, yeah. And they give you places where you can camp, good place, and they give yep. you water sources. Nice. So and, you can plan to get to that point to right. get your water and, but, sources. And you have to be careful because not all of them are year-round water sources. Oh you know, gosh. if you go in late <laughs> August or September, right. it could be a creek and it's dried up. Oh, wow. So you got to be a little be careful, careful of that. So we just we would look at the trail map and the guide and see, well, how far can we go? Yep. Usually every three or four miles you could get water. Yeah, yeah. And we just top off our water bottles mm -hmm. with a filter. Yeah, that's and awesome. that's what we did. But you had to do a lot of planning and check out because I remember there was one section where I think it was like 15 miles between uh, water sources or break, definite break, water. Break, break, yeah, break it was spots. like between wow. where we left camp yeah. and the, where we were going to camp, and there was a lake there, but there was basically no water in between there. Oh, wow. So I, you know, probably carried a couple liters. Of water going of, too. Yeah, to make sure we could make it. And we did find a couple little small little creeks or right. seeps that we could get some water. Cow pee streams coming <laughs> Almost, down. They're yeah. pretty close. Yeah. You just have to be careful of some of those smaller streams, even though it looks like it's running water. You can't. Especially if you see wildlife or other cows, even or other things or cattle, like domesticated cattle or whatever too, that oh yeah, we ran be careful of we that. ran into some sections where they had the open range cattle and there was yeah, you know, they were just all over the place and that that was the only water was what they were using. Oh, my gosh. But we never got – and always boiled the water or, or used those uh, filters. Never had a problem. And prayer probably, too. A little <laughs> prayer never hurts. Never hurts. <laughs> You're getting your, your water does, stuff, too. Does not, That's crazy. Does not hurt. Well, Mike, thank you for sharing uh, that stuff. We'll put some stuff on man360.tv, additional content page as well, and maybe some links uh, to maybe some things. And I'll get some of that information from you as well, Mike, yeah, that you can help definitely. share with people. So yeah, we just uh, wanted to share a little bit about doing hard hikes. We didn't really do a hard hike today. Um, it was a couple miles, and uh, we found this little cabin with this yeah. uh, little swing. I don't think we've ever found a cabin and swing <laughs> in any of our hikes. That no, we've done, not before. Especially no. be able to shoot that. So, but thanks, yeah. Mike, for being on the program. Hey, enjoyed it. Appreciate it, Brian. Buddy. No problem. Let's do our 360 degree review of today's program. All of them that I talked to today had something great to give us. From David Mayo sharing about not focusing on what you don't have in life, but what you do have to Robert Evans talking about the simple importance of staying hydrated when working out, to Mike Malone helping us understand that planning it takes to do an incredibly hard hike. There were some great spiritual principles to consider today as well. David and his outlook on life was a wonderful reminder of the power of gratefulness and meditating on what you do have. What Robert shared about staying hydrated seemed like such a simple thing, but sometimes the simple things in life are the most important like Bible reading and prayer when things get tough. Mike shared about strategic planning that had to go into his multi-day backpacking trips made me think of what we need to do to help people count the cost when sharing Jesus with them. I hope this program helped you look at hard things differently. Maybe you just lost your job. Maybe you or someone in your family got a bad report from the doctor. Or maybe you're dealing with a serious emotional struggle right now. Those can all seem like hard things, but Jesus is right there to help you if you just reach out to Him. You can also reach out to us on our website and send us a prayer request. We'd love to hear from you. MAN360 exists for men to be complete in every way through Christ, mentally, physically, and spiritually. Please connect with us on Facebook or Instagram, and we'll see you next week right here on MAN360.